Okay, three, two, one. Oh, and there is the A12Z. Feels like it shouldn't be removable, but after some struggle, there it is. Oh wow, that looks cool. Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. We've got the new iPad Pro. It's a very exciting day. We gotta check out some new Apple products. And I wanna see, does it still bend? The tendency for the old iPad Pros to turn into this was actually quite high. If you don't have a case on it that's structural, it's very possible you could bend it in day-to-day -day usage. So let's see if Apple fixed that. I wanna see the LiDAR sensor. I actually do a mini teardown inside. Take a look at that. And um, the office is in process. We're still figuring things out. Very excited to finish all my part boards and uh, start the iPad line also. This is technically the second generation 11 inch iPad. Apple calls the new 12.9 inch the fourth generation as there have been four generations of it. So if any of you guys were confused about that, that's what that is. As usual, always very difficult to open. Ooh. Nice paper. Apple's been minimizing the use of plastic and there is that lens. Ooh, actually like neat and tidy, not at all as crazy as I expected it to be. The lenses are a little bit smaller than the 11 Pro. Here, we'll get a full overview in just a second. Very nice. So it feels pretty much identical to the old one. The Wi-Fi and LTE versions are five grams heavier now. Wi-Fi is four, LTE five. It's very possible that Apple did make some structural changes on the inside. And of course you have your 18 watt plug, as well as the cable, like the little indent here for the camera lens. All right, so if you remember last year, we did the bend test. One. Yeah, oh my gosh, that is literally like silly putty. And it bent like candy, like it was so simple to do. And structurally, very weak around the smart connector here. The new iPad Pro now has five microphones, the one by the lens, much bigger, but still not as big as the 11 Pro one here. It's interesting that it's a smaller version of this on an iPad. And again, the sensor is 10 megapixels, so it doesn't need to be quite as large. It's just very surprising to see how subtle it is. The bumps are much smaller than the 11 Pro series. And the LiDAR sensor, smooth, but very discernible. It's comprised of two elements. I wanna take a look at that, see if we can learn anything about what Apple will do for the 12 Pro from this sensor. A little disappointed that Apple didn't experiment with colors. I wanted to see a midnight green iPad Pro or a rose gold for this series. But I guess there's always the refresh later this year with the Apple A14X. I find it interesting that Apple is doing two refreshes of the iPad Pro in the same year. Last time they did that with the iPad 4 series, there were a lot of angry customers and they're doing it again. They'll be adding 5G to the iPad Pro later this year and launching alongside the new iPhones or so we hear from the leaks. But don't let that stop you buying the iPad Pro you wanna get now because the leaks game, it never ends. Ooh, I really like the new camera interface. So definitely taken from the iPhone 11 Pro series. We have a new zoom button here on the left previously. It was this slider. So like the old iPad, it does display the badge. You still cannot change the video settings from in here. There's the zoom, very nice, very fluid. And it's 10 megapixels, not 12 of the 11 Pro, but still seems adequate here. So take a look at that lens. I mean, we're gonna compare them in a little bit, but there are magnets placed everywhere. So we'll be developing our own case. And depending on how this does, we might add a rigid X brace inside, or we'll experiment with a couple options, but I wanna make a very rigid case, something that'll ensure that this does not bend under normal use. Apple officially didn't say anything about it becoming stronger, like they did with the 6S. That one they just silently updated to aluminum 7000 series. Okay, three, two, one. Oh man, like butter. Yeah. Too easy. So other side, just for proof of concept. Yeah, that's just like that. Aluminum still bends and breaks. Stress fracture right there. Still able to use it. This is not the foldable we were promised from Apple. <laughs> wow, too easy. So we'll take a look in a second, but it appears that Apple has not made any changes whatsoever to reinforce this iPad. It's still just as bendable, and I could see this bending with it. In your backpack, of course, is where it's going to be bending. Speaking of, I think Apple would do a great job on a foldable, and apparently they will be doing one. Okay, 
Now it doesn't appear that the microphone side, oh, actually it did crack. So with heavy pressure, it will crack, but you have to get to a certain point where that needs to happen. Yeah, that's just gnarly. I mean, pretty much what I expected. Now let's take a look inside and uh, let's unfold it first. Oh, not much better. Yikes. Uh, so as you can see, I can easily manipulate it with my hands. Most of the structural integrity is in the screen. Believe it or not, this thing is so easy to bend. You guys absolutely need a case. And the microphone area up here. Oh, wow. I cannot believe how malleable this metal is. Still, they did not fix anything. And the USB port area. Oh, <laughs> that's just a crack. Boom. Cracks like nothing. Okay, so... From here to here is the only area where it's structurally sound enough where it's difficult to bend. Everywhere else, oh my goodness, just tears into it. And the case that Apple sells has almost no rigidity. You need one that actually wraps all the way around. So the answer is Apple has not made this any more durable whatsoever, chassis-wise, just from the testing Let's take a look inside compared to the last generation to see if there's anything new going on. A little bit tricky, but this display should have come right up. It's unbelievable how thin the LCD displays are on the iPad series. So yeah, the new display plugs right into the older one. It appears that display-wise, identical, possibly even interchangeable. So the batteries on the 11-inch did get smaller. They're now rated at 7,540 versus 7,812. Apple has ever tinkering and optimizing. Speakers appear to be exactly the same. It appears that they're not using screws anymore on the thermal protection over the processor. It's now just a removable sticker. It's just a straight peel up. And here are the internals. So the chip at first appearance does look identical. They're using a new thermal paste, a white one. And there is the A12Z. So the only difference that I can discern right now is the Apple logo replaces the A12X. The text still remains on the bottom. Overall still looks almost identical to the A12X. I mean, the only difference is that Apple added an eighth GPU core. Still the same chip, still the same architecture. Yeah, so very minor differences here. Apple has not done as much as they would like you to think. It's a slight refresh before the major one at the end of the year. It appears that Apple has made this slightly easier to repair. There are a few differences in the chip placements and components, and this connector seems to be all, oh, there's a little cover on it, I see. Now there are a few proprietary screws around the camera lens. Apple clearly does not want you inside of here. And this may be because of the LiDAR sensor, but it's all fused together on one little platform here. It feels like it shouldn't be removable, but after some struggle, there it is. Oh, wow, that looks cool. Oh, man, so we have a look at what it could possibly look like on the iPhone 12. Look at the design differences versus the 11 Pro series. How cool is that? Wow. So Apple is seriously stepping their game up here and the camera module itself is smaller. The 3D sensor just looks so neat up close. That is seriously next level. So one of those is the time of flight, one the LiDAR sensor, and they work together. Actually looks completely different than the teardown that Apple gave us, maybe to throw some people off. That's very interesting to me how different it looks. And here's that sensor. So not quite a perfect circle like it seems outside. And some other changes that I noticed, Apple didn't actually make anything structurally different. In fact, a lot of the CNC lines are exactly the same. What they did add is a thermal strip here on the left. This is likely to help with the cooling. As they said, they reworked that on these new iPad Pros to handle 4K workloads. Cut patterns are all the same. It makes sense why it feels the same. All the placement of the magnets is uh, identical. So it's quite clear that Apple did not do structural reinforcements and it's unfortunate, but you definitely need to treat your iPad with care as it's a very delicate object. Man, I love seeing the internals of Apple products. The miniaturization, man, it's getting to a whole nother level. This is the future, the A12Z and the LiDAR sensor. 
So cool. Well, there it is, guys. The 2020 iPad Pros, not any more structurally sound, but Apple did make some improvements on the inside to the thermal management, the new Apple processor with the Apple logo on it, the 12Z. I'm curious to see how much faster or slower it'll be versus the X and the Apple A13, so I'll be doing some testing there. There's the most impressive part of the video, the time of flight sensor and the reworked lens, more compact. The engineering here is insane. And the slightly smaller battery and the reworked components here, placements. Overall though, mostly the same. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.